So congratulations, Gurinder. Viceroy's House has been a long time in the coming, like you said, seven years. Mm. Um, a film like this, I guess, does take a long time to prepare. Yes, long time researching and uh, getting everything right. Mm. So how was the reaction to the film so far? You've just premiered at Berlin. Yes. You're having a London premiere soon. Um, so far, for me, it's been amazing watching a film with audiences. Uh, in Berlin, we had 1,800 people in the theatre, mm. and it was a very, very lovely, warm response. People kept clapping and wouldn't stop clapping, and I had to sort of shut them down in the end. Um, mm. Generally, I think people, when they see the film, are very moved uh, by the film and also come out saying, gosh, I didn't know any of that history. Mm. And that is really the reason I made the film. Uh, it was a very uh, traumatic period in our shared history as Brits and Asians. And and I think very, very few people know about partition or exactly, you know, what happened. And people don't really like to talk about it. And do you find that's the case still within our British Asian community? Oh yes, absolutely. Because we've always been told that it was our fault and it was shameful for us. It's a shameful part of our history because because Mountbatten had come to India to hand India back. Uh, but we started fighting with each other and we started rioting and killing each other. And so Mountbatten had no choice but to ha to divide India, to partition India. So the partitioning of India was really our fault. Um, that's what we'd always been told. Mm -hmm. So in my film, of course, I was able to find research that said the opposite, that actually partition had been planned. It was a political act. Mm. Um, Having watched the film, actually, that was quite that was news to me. That was quite yeah. a, a twist, so to say, so mm. to speak, because well, I hadn't. I hadn't come across that research before. Were you equally surprised when you first read that book and heard about it? Absolutely. I was very surprised because, you know, everything I've been told, you know, uh, in the history books and in films like Gandhi, you know, was not correct. Um, but my mum had always said to me that she didn't understand what happened in 1948 because she says in Rao Pindi, everybody lived together happily. I had Christian friends, she said, Muslim friends, Hindu friends, Sikh friends. We were all living side by side. We all celebrated each other's religious festivals, mm. um, birthdays, weddings. You know, everyone was close. And then it seemed like overnight something happened. And she's always said that, you know, she felt the English put some black magic, you know, in the <laughs> water or something. You know, they did jadu and... And she's always maintained that, you know, and so I've also grown up with that too. So I was very grateful in making this film that I was actually able to prove her right. Mm. Now we've known you for some great British films mm. and the common theme running across them is comedy. Yeah. We love your comedy, we love the jovial nature of your film. So this is quite a departure. Yes. So as a writer-director you must have, I think, faced some challenges. So what were the tough points of making this film? Um, well, this film is a departure because I wanted to do something different. And in telling the, uh, the story of Partition, I knew it wasn't going to be a comedy, obviously. Um, but I still wanted to make it epic and I wanted to make it very populist. You know, I didn't want to make a dry historical film that is a documentary, you know. I wanted to make something that ordinary people would find accessible and enjoy watching and I think the hardest thing was really uh, in writing the script and making the film was getting the balance right in terms of the political story upstairs and the more human emotional story downstairs um, and finding that right balance you know mm. uh, because to me the Indian characters were just as important as the Mountbatten's, you know, and the leaders. And I wanted to make sure that we we told the story upstairs where we looked at the decisions behind um, partition, you know, and what was going on, and how those decisions were in turn affecting the ordinary people downstairs. Mm. By upstairs, you mean politicians downstairs? 
staff. The workers, the staff. Yes. Mm. So the conceit of the film is is basically upstairs, downstairs, mm. but the house is used as a microcosm, you know, as a metaphor for the whole of India. Mm. Now we've always admired your films for the casting. You're great at casting actors, and you get some fresh new faces. You get some, you know, good quality actors in. So. This film shows us the same. Mm. You've got some great actors in there and some young talent. So how did you bring everybody together? Were there particular actors you definitely wanted to be part of mm. this? Was it chance? Um, no, acting, it, it, it's never chance. Mm. <laughs> you know, one sends the script out to an actor that you think is right for the role and then hopefully they respond. And I was very grateful. Um, I sent the script to Gillian Anderson and she hadn't even finished reading the script when she called me and said, I'm in, I really want to do this film. Mm. Same with Hugh, um, uh, Simon Callow, um, Michael Gambon, they all really loved the film, mm. the, the script. And with Huma Qureshi, she auditioned for the film. Mm. And I saw her audition and thought, wow, this woman's good, I like her. She's I was really great. happy she was in it. She's such a great actress. So very... I don't see her enough, actually, in Indian cinema. No, she's just breaking out, I think, now. Mm. I think very soon she'll be a big actress. Mm. Uh, um, and I think that Manish Dial, who I'd seen in A Hundred Foot Journey, I thought was a very lovely, empathetic actor. Mm. Um, and I thought he was perfect in the role of Jeet. Mm. He was very dashing on screen. Very yeah, dashing. He looks very good. And then the role of Dilip, um, there's a young actor called Jazz Dion who's from South. I South actually Hall. looked him up. After seeing the, the running credits, I, yeah. thought, I want to know who that actor is because I haven't seen him before. Well, I, I don't think I've seen him before anyone on stage no. or on screen. No, he's been on stage. And, um, but Jazz, for me, is... You know, he's going to be a big actor. So he's from South Hall? He's from South Hall. Wow. Yeah, great actor. He really well. like him a lot. Yeah. Um, it was quite poignant to see Umburi on screen. Yes. And the late Umburi. And yes. I was wondering if there were any other scenes that you'd shot with him which you maybe didn't get to include in the film because we don't get to see him that long. Yes. Um, there were. There was a, an extension of a scene with him, you know, that was much longer. Um, but it. I had to sort of in the balance of the love story and the political story, I had to shorten that uh, in order to keep the Jinnah story moving. Mm. And it's the, it, it is, it's the scene in particular where we meet um, Asif. Um, and that scene could have gone on for much longer, but, but at that point when Jinnah is mentioned, we sort of need to meet Jinnah for the mm. first time, you know, otherwise we're we're delaying meeting him. So those are the sort of decisions that one has to make. Mm. But I think that um, Ompuri wouldn't have minded if I <laughs> cut that scene short. Sure. Anyway, it's too late now, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> um, India is very sensitive when it comes to the partition. Absolutely. The political stories, political films. And obviously you're, you've got a distributor there. Reliance for showing the film in India. It's yes. Exciting. Yes. So did you come up against any censorship issues? Were you worried about the portrayal of all the political leaders in the film? India has actually been very supportive of the film and Reliance have been a great help in India. And uh, actually, you know, they, they, everyone was very happy with the film and... I think people in India are excited about the film because it reveals, you know, what actually happened, you know, the kind of duplicity of the British at the time. And I think that uh, the great news for me is that the film, uh, Reliance have made a Hindi dub of the film. Okay. So in India the film's going to be released in Hindi as well as English. So it's going to be a pretty big release out there. So we'll get to see Hugh Bonneville speaking Hindi. Yes. <laughs> That'd be nice treat for his Downton Abbey fans. English Hindi, I think yeah. he'll speak, yes. English. English, yeah. That'd be good. Um, so lastly, after this film, this film's complete, your baby yeah. has taken seven years, what's next? Do we have another film in the pipeline? Well, I always have lots of things I'm juggling, but this film is so important to me that I'm actually going to go on the road with it. So I, it's opening in different countries at different times. Mm -hmm. So I'll be going to Australia oh, wow. with the film. I'll go to India, obviously, mm -hmm. and you know, a few other countries as well. Is Pakistan included? Are you able to show the film there? Um, I'm hoping we're getting a release in Pakistan. I'll certainly work on that. Mm -hmm. I have friends there who are helping me at the moment. 
Um, and I would love to go to Pakistan with the film, uh, attend a Pakistani premiere mm. if, if we have one. That would be great. And lastly, just wanted to find out what your family thought of the film. Have they seen the full feature? Um, What's their reaction? Actually, only two members of my family have seen it. My mum, who cried all the way through it, mm. big sobs, went through a packet of tissues. Uh, and my cousin, uh, who uh, really, really really loved it and was fine until the end and then she started sobbing so <laughs> i did too when i watched it the end really does get you yeah when you see your family photograph and you see don't give away the ending oh, it's, not the end. it's not the end don't give away an ending but um it does get very moving by the end mm. it's very touching and if you're british and asian and if you have anything to do with partition i think you can't help but be mm be moved by it but also I think it's moving for non-Asians you know a lot of British English people who've seen the film have come out very very moved mm. job done